students. I've been getting a lot of emails about the colloids experiment, so I wanted to answer a few questions for you guys. And the number one question that I've been getting is, how do we fill out this first little portion for the tests? Now the Tyndall test is a test for a colloid. And if you get a positive test, you're gonna see the outline of the beam of light. So all you need to do for these two is you can either write a positive or a negative, or you can write out the words positive or negative. So if you shine a beam of light through the starch and you can see the outline of it, you would go ahead and just put a positive symbol right there. If it's negative, then you'd put the negative symbol. And like I said, again, you can write the word positive or negative. Now, the same thing for the iodine test and the silver nitrate test. How we test for starch is with iodine. So if you get a positive test uh, for starch with iodine, it's gonna turn that dark purple or black color. So if you get the purple or black color, you would put a positive here. So see how we don't do the silver nitrate test on starch because that's not how we test for starch. So there's no answer that goes there. How we test for sodium chloride is with silver nitrate. We don't test for sodium chloride with iodine. So there's no place for you to put an answer there. So what happens is silver nitrate is soluble in water. So that means that it comes apart into its ions and those float around in the H2O molecules. And remember from solubility that all nitrates are soluble. Now, when sodium chloride is dissolved in water, it also comes apart into its ions because it's soluble. But when silver nitrate and sodium chloride meet each other, the silver gets together with the chloride and they form an insoluble substance, silver chloride. Now, remember that most chlorides are soluble, but silver chloride is the exception. So it's going to form a white solid, and that usually makes the solution look white and opaque. So if you get a positive silver nitrate test, you will see white. You'll see it go from clear and colorless to a white substance, and that means you would write a positive there. Then you guys are gonna test the beaker water for both starch and sodium chloride, and you're gonna see which one is going through the dialyzing membrane. So if you get a positive, you would put positive, and if you get negative, you would put negative. Definitely go off of what the experiment shows you, not what I wrote just right there. Okay, so the next question says, is the solution of sodium chloride a, two, a true solution or a colloidal dispersion? What I want you guys to do is just go ahead and cross out true there and just leave it as solution and cross out AL right here and cross out dispersion. So then we have, is the solution of NaCl a solution or a colloid? And that should make it a little simpler for you guys. Do the same thing with the starch. Just go ahead and make it simpler for yourselves and say, is this a solution or is it a colloid? And then how do you justify your answers there? And that is probably gonna be with those results right there. So just go ahead and explain it. Now on the next page, it asks for your observations and that's just what that is. Just write down some observations of what you see. And then your evaluation of product quality, that's an opinion question. Usually if you're doing this in the lab, you can feel it and smell it. And it's kind of easier to write down an answer, but you just gotta look at the video with this. Now it says, does the emulsion conduct electricity? So that's just yes or no. 
And then it says, does the emulsion dissolve in oil or water? So that, again, is going to be answered once you watch the video. And then it says emulsion type here. Now, the easiest way to answer the emulsion type that I've found is to go back to the first page and look at the chart. So we've got this chart right here. And I want you to look at the bottom where it says conduct current. So remember your results, whether your colloid conducted a current or not. So that's going to be yes or no. And then you're just going to go up here. So say it conducted a current. You would go back up here and you'd go, oh, my emulsion type is oil and water. And then the next couple of questions ask you what the dispersing medium is and what the dispersed phase is. Now, when we're talking about colloids, we call it dispersing medium and dispersed phase. But if we were talking about a solution, the dispersing medium would be the solvent and the dispersed phase would be the solute. So if we reframe it and talk of, about it in terms of solvent and solute instead of dispersing medium and dispersed phase, that might make it a little bit more clear what we're talking about here. Okay, so that's going to tell you what the dispersing medium is and what the dispersed phase is, all based on whether we're conducting current or not. Now again, go with the results from the experiment, not the results that uh, I gave you right here. I'm, if they're the same, then they're the same, but if they're different, then you're definitely going to want to write those different answers in the slots because you want those points. All right, then it says, what is the emulsifier down here? So an emulsifier is going to be a molecule that has a polar region and it has a nonpolar region. And what an emulsifier does is it'll point its nonpolar tails towards a nonpolar molecule. So say we have oil here and we want the oil droplets to stay suspended in water. So we would use an emulsifier to do this. And we do this in food products a lot. Uh, so say like salad dressing, if you have a uh, Italian dressing, what it'll do is it'll separate out into an oil layer and a water layer. So the non-polar layer would be the oil and the polar layer would be um, the water with the spices and all that kind of stuff in it. And if you have an emulsifier in there, you shake it up and the oil droplets will stay suspended in the aqueous layer longer so you can get it onto your salad without getting an oil slick only. So if you don't have an emulsifier in there, it's really hard to keep the oil in, um, dispersed in the um, water layer. Now, uh, we use usually in foods lecithin, and you'll see lecithin or soy lecithin or some kind of soy product because soybeans have a lot of lecithin in there, or you'll see eggs because eggs have a lot of lecithin in there. And that's what we tend to use in our food products. Now, in emulsifier, if we're talking about washing our clothes, we tend to call that a surfactant instead, but it does the same thing. It forms these little things called micelles. And the emulsifier in this lab, I'll give you a hint, it starts with the letter B. So there aren't a whole lot of chemicals that you use for the cold cream. So maybe find a couple that start with B and research them a little bit and you'll come upon the right answer. Okay, that's it for the colloid lab. Bye-bye.